Good day, fellow investors. Whenever we analyze a stock, this is the outcome. So comments, can you analyze this, can you analyze that? And I thought, why not take a look at the most requested ones and make a video with 10 analysis, discuss the risk and reward, and then you get what you want, which is usually my opinion. So let's immediately start. The timestamps are below. And if you enjoy this video, smash that like button to support the channel. And don't forget subscribing so that you see in your notification by hitting the notification bell whether there is a video that comes out often that gives you value or not. The ones you get value from, you watch the others, you simply skip. No worries there. So let's immediately start with Crocs. Now Crocs, you need both of steel to invest here. And the first time I analyzed Crocs was in 2015, when the most likely outcome for the stock for the business was bankruptcy. But if we look at it now, we can see that it has often had these huge ups, followed by huge downs, up and down. And here it was really, really ugly. And I was working at the Amsterdam Fashion Institute here and we analyzed it also as a company, etc. Then ugly, good, better, better, ugly, and then something happened. When it went amazing and now that you see this, that always drives interest towards analyzing a stock 70% down. But keep in mind, it's still up significantly from 2019. So never look at the stock price, look at the business, market cap 3 billion and price earnings ratio 5. So that's why the interest. Let's look at this a little bit deeper. And we can see why the stock exploded. So the business doubled, the stock did much more at first. So that's always the exuberance. But that's the market reactions we have to take advantage of. Gross margin improved, earnings per share boomed and free cash flow not that much of an improvement so that's also something to keep in mind but still 300 let's say 400 billion compared to the market cap that's a price to free cash flow of 10 that's not that bad when it comes to operating a net income don't forget that net income here is higher than operating income so these are some adjustments or something like that so always keep that in mind but also keep in mind that it can get really ugly for the company, it can lose money and have also issues with that, as we'll see in a moment, given that they have really, really levered the balance sheet. This is really from a low debt company, higher debt and boom, incredible debt that they are now working on lowering. Let's look at the business. So, okay, revenues, huge growth, even if a little bit less without the hanky-panky acquisition they made. But still okay crocs and they now acquired hey dude brands all right so this is usually the issue with these high flying stocks so at some point the management is here it's down 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 and then they start to get the feeling that they are the kings of the world and when they are here at the top they say let's do something that will make us even better continue this trend Let's make a crazy acquisition to buy a bigger jet or something. And then usually this happens. So let's dig into this. Okay, adjusted and diluted the earnings per share. So this is, okay, adjusted because of the acquisition. But their plan is to grow Sandal revenues by 4x and grow everything over time, grow in China, invest in digital. So the tech pantoffles of whatever they are selling. So the guidance is for good earnings, for good growth ahead. And long-term guidance is for Crocs to be a $6 billion revenue company or even more. So double from the current. If they double from the current, that will be 800 million in cash flows, which then compared to the market cap is a free cash flow of 20 and then the stock should follow. So from a fundamental perspective, this then should be a bargain. But there is also leverage, which they have to focus on and they don't expect to do share repurchases until the leverage is lowered. For now, with the cash flows, really, they can lower the leverage and everything looks good. Okay, a lot of adjustments for the Hey Dude acquisition 
everywhere so without that next year this should be normal but this is the key if you look at long-term borrowings they took 2.5 billion or 2 billion of debt to buy hey dude and this is really really insane because they took 2 billion in debt and diluted also 450 million in company shares and that is dilution of course when the stock price was high that looks smart but still they now have 2 billion in debt and if you look at the equity there is no equity there are some deferred taxes i didn't dig deeper so look at what that is and what that comes to redemption or something and of course they have done a billion in buybacks in 2021 of course now they cut buybacks but in 2021 they did a billion at much much higher prices likely to push the stock prices higher because the management is simply genius now the story is different that's why i don't like buybacks especially done here and not here let's see how much buybacks did they do in 2020 oh 170 million okay better still something but if this would be opposite that would be something so that's something i already don't like and now yes it looks like value but the huge debt paying what did they pay 10 times revenues for some hey dude that they are now the geniuses of the field it's simply too much risk and if that risk turns into ugliness with 2 billion in debt with increasing interest rates with this with this it is a risky bet and that's it and therefore it's not for me crocs enter go in and out of fashion if now everybody's tired of that piece of plastic in your wardrobe you buy something else they're trying to differentiate but it's a really really ugly business customer preferences sometimes in, in sometimes it's out think of the uggs the this the this the pandemic is hopefully over so it will be much less and that is already reflected in the stock price compared to the exuberance earlier that might have been from the one billion they spent into pushing their own price so this is really hanky panky shenanigans so not for me you need balls of steel to touch this at any price walgreen boot alliance so this is a pretty simple stable company if we look at the stock price over time really exploded ta -ta -ta, then up and then issues with higher competition pricing issues etc etc lower a little bit up and then down again to a p ratio of five and a dividend yield of 4.5 percent which is already something now i did an analysis on walgreens a while ago so here it is and we took the dividend dividend growth expected of seven percent for five percent dividend yield expected and we are there in line if the dividend grows if the dividend grows at a slower rate which could be the case this might be the most likely outcome then the present value for a 10 percent return is 31 so we are still a little bit overvalued from that perspective but in general the business is stable there will be ups and downs there will be headwinds there will be uh, pricing issues uh, legal issues that they are settling now a little bit so there will always be something because of the importance and largeness of the business but all in all pretty stable slow steady growth this might slow down a little bit but the cash flows should be stable the dividend should be stable they will likely increase it maybe five percent is too much so a little bit less so maybe let's say three percent increase and uh, let's let's keep it at 25 four percent dividend yield so you are here if you're happy with a four percent dividend yield there should not be much to fear here so you might want to add on the dips and then rebalance if not now a similar ticker but a different company but you have shown a lot of interest in this and that is warner bros discovery the spin-off merger from at&t now if we look at the numbers here revenues are expected to jump from 2020 and also ebitda is going to expect to to be expected to jump and then 60 percent free cash flow conversion so 60 percent that should be 8 billion in 2020 
free they expect to use the cash flows to deleverage very quickly and then it could pay dividends however AT&T investors are dividend investors and they usually when there is a spin-off they dump this like I don't know what because if there is no dividend why am I holding this they don't know how to invest in other but also the dividend is cut so they took this as a dividend and just sold like there is no tomorrow so this is always spin-offs are a measure of irrationality in the market and also an opportunity for value investors of course nobody knows whether this is a bottom or not but you have to see what you're buying and then assess the situation from a risk and reward perspective if we look at the free cash flow over the last quarter so they can make 1 billion in free cash flows that would be the value created plus they should give you growth ahead and if we compare 1 billion to the market cap that's not much this year but if they can push it to 8 billion per year as their plan is in 2023 then that's also a 20 percent free cash flow yield which means that this could easily double and that is what everyone is expecting there of course there are uncertainties there is the high necessity for investment will they still be dumping more and i just think let's just keep it simple so even if they do this so even if this is at 5 billion or 4 billion if they reach free cash flows and lower the debt over time that looks interesting and this could really be a spin-off irrational opportunity so analyze the business see whether this is doable how doable it is what are the main risks and then just see how it fits you i might dig deeper into this one just to see whether it is really something now let's go to the stock that is perhaps the most requested over the last five years since i started this youtube channel it is the most requested because of the following you see this and this stock price just goes up up and up no matter what and therefore people are really really interested the price earnings ratio is in line with the market and there is also a dividend so people want to know okay will this incredible trend just continue forever and is this a buy now as it is a little bit down well i took a look at it and it is a an alternative asset management so they find the financing they get the fee from their projects and their compound annualized return is 20 percent that is correct however we have to always look at the risk and reward in the return and what they have created so they assume that alternatives are the places to be and that it should be better than equities and fixed income over time that it should grow higher higher and higher that their business will simply double so if this is the value per share in four years then this is a free x in four years so this is an absolute bargain and now you think okay but why the market is pushing it down well guys it is all a play on valuation they find the money finance it and everything go there to their revenues fees and everything but look at this real estate infrastructure renewables private equity technology insurance etc this all depends on interest rates and this is all all what they did in the past is pure playing on leverage so they took advantage of 20 years of lower and lower interest rates more and more investments there is no alternative investing for any kind of yield and that's why they did this return so it is likely an okay risk reward adjusted return but here you might get caught and show what does it mean to swim naked because they will just keep investing 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 but it is much different to invest here here than here everything is much more expensive and they are competing in a very very expensive world so if they grow this yes but at some point yes they have a structure just working on fees but at some point this might revert and they are levered to the core so this is leverage 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 which means that this really isn't for me because with leverage just everything is 10x so if the market did 10% they did 20% over the last 20 years 
okay, what no big deal. But all these projects, all this, when a recession comes, when the financing becomes an issue, that will eventually happen. When? I have no idea. If things continue to be well, they will free X in the next five years. That's also possible. That's continuation of their 20% per year. Really possible. But for me, simply too much risk because I don't like this levered place. It looks smart. You are a genius while you're doing it. But when it reverts, it gets ugly. That's it. Next stock, Autodesk. So another typical stock here from 300 down 41%. The price earnings ratio is 90. So let's see about this. Of course, their mantra is to create an ecosystem. So they don't really care about profits now, but they have some cash flows and they are slowly and steadily growing. But they really need to grow significantly and constantly to justify this market cap. And you can see that over time it wasn't the case. I looked a little bit at the business and it looks like a very, very quality business, hard to avoid with a good mode. So it is always about price. How much are they going to grow in the future? And if we look at the growth rates, those haven't been really stellar over time. There were also declines as they changed this to subscription model and everything, but this should then have benefited from the pandemic. So if we take slow and steady growth ahead, you have to see how much they have to grow for this to become bigger, bigger and meaningful. If they just continue growing, then the stock price will continue the trend here. If they keep growing at 20%, the stock price will keep growing at 20%. If they slow down, then the stock price will go even lower. But that's usually what happens with growth stocks and, in and investing in growth stocks. Now, another, the Pokemon, Nintendo, Super Mario, whoa, 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 stock that is also constantly requested as a value Japanese forgotten stock. If we look at the stock price, so it was loved, hated, then everyone was looking at Pokemons all around the place, then it was down, but we can see here that it did well over time. Price earnings ratio 14, good dividend yield, so interesting. If we take a look at the business, net sales are actually down and are also expected to be down in the future. So really, of course, a pandemic benefit for them. And the forecast, as said, pretty much down and the profit also down. So the price earnings ratio will be higher. But if we look at their businesses, I really don't know how many people play with these Pokemons and etc. So sales are down significantly and you never know when and how will they hit something new, something that really makes a change for the business. I also don't know. I see growth that il will likely stop for a while. Earnings will likely go down. So that is 300 billion Japanese yens. If I compare it to the market cap, that's price to cash flow of 20, assuming stability, which is simply too expensive for me. So this is already a booming price. Maybe here it will be value. I think it was value here, no matter what, and then it boomed, but it looks a little bit pricey for me. Then we remain in the semis industry and we dig into something that many value investors consider huge value, micro. If we look at the business, at the forecasts there, it's all about growth, growth, growth from their presentation. Then also they are changing a little bit the model where they hope to give more predictable cash flows. That's very interesting. I looked a little bit at the presentation and of course, we'll stick here to the financial performance. So this is them compared to the industry average and only last year they did uh, better. So that's very, very interesting from a margin perspective. And of course, when you do better, when you go for negative to positive, of course, everything in the business changes. And also the stock going from some place where nobody loves in the cycle to something that everyone looks at it as huge value now that it is up 10 times. That's usually normally the case with the market, but they are really doing great cash flows, free cash flows, so likely to be 6 billion per year. If we compare it to here, P ratio of 10, price to free cash flow of 10, dividend very, very small because 
they are going to invest everything continuously in growth, 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 like every other semi company is doing. So really, really growth and maybe something to return to shareholders, but not really that much. Nevertheless, they say that the replacement value, again, a value proposition is 100 billion compared to the market cap so a discount from there they have really a big team and everything what they do and they hope to get to 10 percent of free cash flows of revenue and to return that to shareholders over the cycle so 10 percent of revenue if they can double the re revenues to 60 let's say billion 10 percent that's still just 6 billion so price to free cash flow of 10 11 12 and yes that is the pricing for the semis but i don't know whether it is now a smart thing to do if the cycle hits there can get really really cheaper for the whole industry so i would say watch the cycle there and buy when things look ugly and not when things look good those these companies even if they have good positions now in the market go with these ups and downs and that's normal somebody's winning some other is winning this is a little bit better this is a little bit better so in general the demand is there is growing so We'll see over time, the lower the price is, the better the buy is, but watch for the cyclicality. Then we have Mercado Libre, the Amazon of Latin America. Of course, it boomed and now it unboomed or it went bust. So now everyone is asking whether this is a great buy. Market cap is 40 billion, P ratio is a little bit larger. If we look at the company, really, really great numbers, great growth, so nothing bad there. They are still focused on building the ecosystem, so don't even focus on this. And if they keep growing this over time, that is really, really something. You're buying it at, what is this? one time gross merchandise volume so that's not bad if they can get the five percent net profit margin of that over time that is really something remarkable and if they keep growing and it's likely that the pandemic base is there then of course they will do well but there is competition there is disruption so you have to see really on the field how good they are and this is typical ups and downs for a growth stock so whether it will continue if they continue to grow this will rebound and if we look at the potential so free cash flows revenues 8 billion if they can get to 20 percent out of the revenues and keep growing at 20 30 percent that is really something 1 point something billion then 3 billion so in Three, in three four years they could be to a price to free cash flow of 10 which if they keep on growing that should be okay financial health let's see there is not that much that of course it's a different business model negative capital working capital business model nothing wrong with that like with amazon so really interesting but it will always depend on the growth forward here so always keep in mind latin america that's a little bit more risky so you might want to take it when the situation is ugly there now let's just quickly mention tesla that looks really good and i have analyzed it with of course the spawners i have did so musk is pulling it off amazing margins for a car company if i am allowed to say that so looks really good so they plan to continue to grow 50 percent and they have the cash to grow that's their plan free cash flow is 6 billion and they keep growing 50 percent that also the free cash flow will grow fast we have here a tesla in my table so let's just put free cash flow of 6 billion and if they grow 20 and 10 percent then the intrinsic value is 126 billion if they grow 50 and 25 percent on a terminal multiple of free cash flow 15 that's okay 20 here then they should have 1.5 trillion in market cap so you have to see whether this is something for you or not for me it's a simple no because i see the industry as a cyclical industry with making a lot of money in good times 
Now Tesla is in very good times. In two years, it might be different. So again, I really am amazed by Elon that he pulled this off from being almost bankrupt and this and this. So really remarkable, but still not for me. Too risky, too crazy. And I am a value investor. So Tesla is definitely not for me. Not for me to analyze, comment, and we'll see where it goes. Then we have very often researched and asked Nokia. And if we look at the business, so slow growth, they expect to grow on 5G, on connectivity, on everything. And they hope to get to 2023 outlook clearly positive. And that's always the thing with Nokia. They always hope that two years from now, the situations will improve. That was the case, I don't know, three years ago when I analyzed it. So again, reset, accelerate, and then scale somewhere in the future and make money. So that looks like something. But then if you look at the stock price, it has these ups and downs. Maybe you can buy it when it's really ugly, sell it when it's a little bit better. But not really for me. It is such a sluggish system and competition and everything. Waiting on those big companies to increase spending, etc. So if there isn't something that's really differentiating it, which it isn't, then really something to avoid. Now, if you put a gun to my head and uh, tell me that I have to spend a million now, what would I buy? Well, Maybe I would diversify between the W's. So WBA and WBD for dividend and spin-off value. That would be my conservative take. Everything else seems a little bit like too much of a bad growth stock, too much of risk. And I prefer swimming with value with more certainty than with those growth bets. That's usually my opinion on growth stocks. For now, I'm doing fine with my value investing strategy. So I hope you have enjoyed the risk perspective in this video, which is something that you will always get from me because investing after all is about risk first. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.